Hello, today we're going to be going over our Forest River Salem Hemisphere uh, 270 FKS. We are going to be starting right up front here, basically with our tongue jack. Our first little switch here is just going to be so you can turn the light on and off if you need it to hook up at night and see. The other one here is so that you're able to raise and lower the coach. This is how we level the camper from front to back, but this is also how we get on and off the tow vehicle. I do always like to recommend while you're still hooked to the tow vehicle to make sure you're level from side to side. Usually you want to put a level right inside the doorway there or they have a little stick on level so you can stick on the front and on the side of your coach. But you generally do want to make sure you're over from side to side first. So if you had to elevate one side, you put a block down, use that tow vehicle to roll the, the camper onto that block for you. It just makes it a lot easier. Once you're good from side to side, you can unhitch, make sure you pull the vehicle away and then level front to back with this guy here. And then once you have done that all the way around, you would lower your stabilizer jacks. These guys are located on each corner of the camper. Um, these guys are motorized, which our switches are gonna be here on the other side. All right, so next back behind that is gonna be our two 20 pound tanks. These guys have both been filled minus the propane that was used to test the system with. This guy here is gonna be your regulator. So this basically tells us the status of the tank and would let us know when the tank is empty. As of right now, it is reading red because we have no propane flow. As soon as I go to turn this guy on, as you see, it flips over to green, showing us that we have a propane flow. This system is designed to where you can actually have both tanks on. Once the one tank has been emptied, it will start drawing from the other tank. But you will not know that unless you come out here and look at this regulator because it would be reading red because it's trying to read this tank here. And I'll show you what I mean by that. There's actually a little notch on the on this guy here to show you what tank you're actually using. And then back behind that's gonna be a 24 series uh, deep cycle marine RV style battery. It is a sealed battery. Uh, basically with these guys, you just monitor this little eyelet right here. Um, usually when it's green, it's showing it's got a good foot charge. When it looks kind of clear, it needs to be charged. And black usually shows that, hey, it's dead or over amount of time, it will just go bad. <clears throat> Next, uh, we do have these little cap lights here on the side. Basically, if you're a uh, friend's camp lot, you gotta be able to get your way back because we had a few too many cocktails. This guy can help lead you on your way home. The switch for him is actually gonna be located right inside here. We're gonna try to swap places here so you can try to see that. So there's a switch right up here at the top to turn that on and off. They do give you a little LED light there as well, right there is going to be our battery disconnect. So when we are storing the camper, we're gonna turn this and pull the key out. So anything that was potentially left on would not drain our batteries. Uh, especially the fridge, it is a 12 volt style fridge. Uh, if that guy's at full blast, it will, uh, it will uh, the solar panels do struggle to keep it go, uh, keep up with that uh, fridge. Uh, I believe this model actually has an off grid setting so it doesn't pull as much power to stay cool. And then that very bottom guy there is just pretty much your solar panel controller. So it just monitors the batteries. Uh, when you're kind of boondock camping, once the batteries get below a certain level, uh, it would allow the surge from the panels to come through to charge that battery for you. And then once the batteries have been filled, or once they are full, it, it'll shut that circuit off. It pretty much monitors and maintains those batteries so they don't get overcharged. <clears throat> All right, so as we kind of go further along the line, you're going to see a couple stickers here that both say gray tanks. Uh, so you're going to have two gray tank handles underneath. We're going to try to step to the side where it's a little easier to see those. Basically right down there, there's going to be two gray tank handles. One is going to be just your kitchen sink. The other one is the bathroom sink and shower. And then also that little tube in the back there, you got one that has nothing. That's a breather tube. On the other side, there's going to be another tube like that. That's your overflow tube. And then that one there with the little notch on it or knob is actually the drain the fresh water tank. Well, we're also right here. We do want to make sure you torque your lug nuts to 110 foot pounds. That is to be done at 50, 100 and 200 miles. Uh, and then you always do want to keep the tires topped off to their max PSI level, which these guys are 80 PSI. I always like to recommend whenever you leave the campground, uh, usually the first place we stop is the gas station to refuel to head home. As you're refueling, you can check these lug nuts. You're knocking out two birds with one stone. All right, as we kind of go over here to the other side, we're gonna have another hook up here. We're gonna basically have your black tank, which is gonna be for the toilet. And your other one here is going to be for just the washer drain, because this does have the options of a washer and dryer hookup. 
All right, the next base we're gonna have just a storage compartment here under the bed. Good place to kind of keep the uh, your power cord, which is gonna be this guy right here. It's a 50 amp power cord. It does come with the coach. Your bumper can uh, hold your sewer hose. Uh, the only thing it usually doesn't hold is the clear elbow that comes with your sewer hose. And uh, usually what I like to say is you get yourself a gallon jug of ice cream. I know we're gonna have a good day on the couch eating that guy, but that guy can actually hold that clear elbow for you. That way it can be stored in a compartment and ain't rolling around getting everything potentially nasty. We wouldn't want that, that'd be gross. You get basically you got your outside shower, hot and cold water. But underneath this guy is gonna be your water station. So up here at the top is gonna be your uh, black tank flush. So this is basically a sprayer inside the black tank, sprays around, gets the nastiness out. Um, with that clear elbow, you'll be able to see when that water's coming out clear. You always do wanna shut the water off at the spigot first. And I do always like to recommend that you have a pressure regulator on there and a black hose. Keeps it simple, black tank, black hose. But on the back side, this is a plastic check valve. So too strong a water pressure can damage that check valve. Next, we're gonna have the city water hookup. You always wanna use a pressure regulator at the water spigot. From there, your option is an inline water filter and then your blue or white water drinking hose. Hook up to here, you'll be ready to use the cold side right away. You do have to wait for the hot side, uh, for the water heater to fill up before you'd have water coming out of the hot side. But then again, then you would have to turn it on to get your hot water. It does gas or electric options. We'll show you that here in just a little bit. And then this guy here is gonna be so you can fill the fresh water tank. Once again, it's all plastic valves. I always do recommend using a check valve with the style system setup. Next, you got your uh, campground cable or satellite hookup. Uh, for the park cable, you do have to turn off the TV antenna booster and I will show you that when we have stepped inside. Inside here, you got a little L-shaped style storage compartment and they do have a little light here on the side. All right, so these keys here, I believe these guys we're here are gonna be our black key to lock these guys. We got our spare tire there as well. And then we got the other side here. Once again, it's gonna be our black key. This here is gonna be so that we're able to extend and retract our rear stabilizer jacks. We're gonna have one on front to do the front side. So then next we're gonna have our first door here. Then our nice, lovely cleaner decided to lock our deadbolt. The good thing is I got the keys for that. So with the keys here, uh, basically for the door handle, when you turn this to the right, it locks the handle. To lock your deadbolt, you're gonna turn the key to the left, but you're unable to pull that key out. If you turn it to the right, you're able to pull that key out to show that you did not lock your deadbolt. I also went ahead and labeled the keys for you because you had two purple keys. So your regular standard uh, purple key here is gonna be for your front door. And then I went ahead and filled in the other one with a silver Sharpie and wrote a B on it for the back door or bathroom, because the bathroom is right here, or even bedroom. It's a 3B key, whatever your option is, back door, bedroom, or bathroom. Next, we got a 110 hook up outside here. And then you can hook a TV up outside. They give you this guy here for uh, dog leash. Your low point drains are located underneath here. They are red and blue, I believe these ones were. Oh, they're actually tucked up underneath here. Let me steal that guy so you guys can kind of see that a little better. But they're gonna be tucked up underneath there. You got red for hot, blue for cold. And you see you got those little knobs on there. I always like to recommend you open those guys up, open up a faucet inside. As you guys go home, that air is gonna blow through those lines push any of the excess water out for you so you wouldn't have potentially water left in there that could come stagnant or bad. It is also used, those lines are also used when you go to winterize your coach. All right. I do have the outside speakers on. I try not to have them on too loud so I wouldn't have to try to talk over them, but right now I'm having to talk over a lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> we never know what's gonna happen. We do actually have the mount here to actually where you could bring your TV from uh, inside and bring it out and hook it up here if you wanted to. All right, then we have the water heater. So with your water heater is a gas electric option. 
The gas option is controlled from inside on our control panel, which I'll show you that in just a moment. For the electric, that's going to be located down here in the bottom corner. Right now it is on because we are currently in the middle of making sure that it was testing and getting good and hot, which it was. <clears throat> but whenever you are done camping, you do want to get all the water out of this guy. To do so, you're going to open, pull this up here to relieve the pressure, and then you're going to remove this guy down here. This is a 1 and 1 16th socket, and this is what they like to call your anno rod. Okay, this guy basically starts out the size of a dime, I'm going to work itself down the size of a coat hanger. But basically what it's doing is it's tracking the impurities in the water so it attacks that rod and not your tank because it is a steel tank. And our cover for that guy is actually hiding. I got him hiding right over here. Uh, as we move along, up top is going to be our vent for the stove. Right now this guy is closed. You would want to pop this open whenever you go to cook. And then this guy here is going to be our furnace intake and outtake. Uh, do recommend trying not to block this, but would recommend getting mud dauber screens to put over this so it keeps the mud daubers out of there and wasps from building nests because then that will uh, cause issues with this to properly work. And then we have our other one down here for our front stabilizer jacks, basically to extend and to retract. Uh, I didn't point this one out towards the back, but this guy here and the one in the back, these are basically your ports. So if the, something was to happen to the motors on the slide room, you still have a manual way to bring them in. Then they do provide you an outside sprayer. Uh, this guy's just hooked to the cold water, but then it's got different options for the sprayer end on it, just like your uh, normal house one would. We've got an outside fridge here. Basically, uh, it is uh, 110 only, so you do have to be hooked up to sure power for this to have power. And then we're gonna have our outside grill. Basically, this guy would come all the way open. This goes down to prevent it from potentially sliding in while you're cooking. But then you're gonna have a quick connect here on the back side. Oh, there he is. I'm gonna connect right here. And then he connects, he goes over here on this side. Uh, and then he's gonna be connected down here. Basically, where's my knob? There's my knob right here. So this knob here right now, I just turned it to the off setting. Uh, whenever you go to hook it up, you would flip it to the on setting for that propane to come through. And then this guy here is going to be controlled with a 751 key to lock that. It's going to be that, that real pretty common key that everyone normally has. Alright, so next we're going to talk about our steps. Uh, this is basically going to apply for both the front and rear steps. You do always want to make sure your door is fully open when you go to open these guys, like whenever you go to put them up or bring them down. But basically these guys here are just going to lock right behind our little lip of the door. When the door is shut, it keeps it secure so it isn't bouncing all over the place going down the road. These guys here, so you're able to adjust the feet. A lot of people will have them all the way drop down and then once they release and bring their steps down, they'll, auto, they'll manually adjust them from there. Okay, basically, just like so. The reason for that is because you do want to try to make sure that this here is as flat with the threshold as possible. Too much of a gap or elevation on this will cause issues with both the screen door and entry door if you are not careful. All right, as we get ready to step on inside, right here, our entry door is gonna be where our fire extinguisher is located. And then we're gonna have our control panel here. So basically with our control panel, it'll tell you our tank statuses. So you're gonna have fresh, which we still got a little water in there, but then our battery, black tank one, you do not have a second toilet, so there is no black tank two. You're gonna have gray tank one, two, and three. I believe three was our, um, Three was the um, washer drain itself, sorry. Two was the um, kitchen sink and one was the bathroom. Um, but please don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, I usually get them a little backwards, especially when there's multiple tanks. Uh, but then next we're gonna have the water pump. You're only using the water pump if you're hooked to, if you're using uh, the fresh water tank. If you're hooked to city water, you do not need him. 
This is for the gas option of our water heater. Then you have tank heaters. Pretty much these guys are with 12 volt heating pads on the bottom of the tanks. And it monitors them with a built in thermostat. Once the tanks, once it reads the tank below a certain level, they will come on to warm them up to keep them from freezing. And then we're gonna have our three lights. Our first one here is gonna be our little ambiance lights above the slide. Our second one is going to be our awning light. And then our third one is our interior lights. Then we have our awning to bring it in and out. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that guy out so we can see that. And basically what we're looking for is that flap to be hor or vertical with the ground. All right, so then your, uh, your awning does have a pitch adjustment to where you can just take this guy here, pull it down, and it will create a pitch. All right, this is meant to be as a shade protectant. They do always recommend that if there is a storm or if you're going to be leaving your camper unoccupied, that you should be bringing your awning in. Too strong, too strong of winds can damage both your awning and the camper if you are not careful. All right, so as we're gonna go ahead and bring this guy back in, then basically our other two is gonna be for our slide rooms. Uh, this one here is gonna be for our main living room slide. And then our second one here is going to be for the bedroom. Let this guy finish coming in real quick. All right, so while that's coming in, I'm gonna go ahead and just divert myself right over here to this side real quick since we are right here. So basically, oh, my apologies. Let me uh, shut off my walk here. So basically inside here is going to be where you would bypass and unbypass the water heater. So there's going to be two knobs on there, one on the hot side, one on the cold side. Basically you're going to mess with these when you go to winterize your coach. <clears throat> Basically right now they're in line with the water filter or with the water heater. When you go to winterize you're going to turn those knobs. Okay, there is another knob that you are also going to turn. The best philosophy is if you're turning one, you're turning them all. I will show you where that other knob is here briefly. It's going to be located in the bathroom near the water pump. But basically that is a shelf that actually folds down and does get screwed in. That's why my drill is still sitting right here on this counter. All right, as we come around, we're going to have our, our fridge area here. And it's pretty nice size. It is a 12 volt style. And you're able to adjust it basically right here with this guy. So the nice thing is, is with the solar panels, you guys are doing some off-grid camping, you're able to turn this guy to these two notches right here, and that's off-grid so it won't be pulling as much power to try to stay cool. Uh, don't get me wrong though, usually on those hotter days, these guys do struggle to, to stay cool. So just please be mindful of that. And then if you're just going to turn it off so it wouldn't drain our battery, you're going to turn it all the way and you'll feel a click. Which we'll go ahead and leave that on because I feel like... Our customers got a nice little long haul ahead of them, so they might want to put some food in there. Next, we're going to have the microwave. Pretty much, it's pretty self-explanatory. We like to say, set the time. And uh, you guys come back. You see the time ain't set on the microwave. It shows there was a power failure at the campsite. You want to look and see if that was from the campsite itself or from the electric company in the area. And then next, we're going to have our stove. This guy will try fold open. This is not a glass stove top. And then basically you're going to turn, it lights up red showing it's in use, and then you'll spark ignite. It sparked pretty easily because I already have propane flow going through the lines. Um, it should die down because I did shut the tank off, as you see, about roughly eight, almost eight seconds, ten seconds there, it shut off on its own. You do have a little switch here to light up these guys. On the one hash mark, the two hash mark lights up these, but it's also the light for the oven. The oven is also controlled and lights from the spark igniter. You're just going to turn it to that flame icon, you push and hold it in, and then turn until it spark ignites. Uh, usually if you angle this just right, you can catch that spark off the glass and you'll see the reflection of when that pilot gets lit. Then we got our hood range, pretty much your fan, or your light, and your fan. You got your cabinet spaces up above. Uh, each side of the sink has a USB hookup and a 110 hookup. Um, storage down below, 
right down below here is going to be our LP slash carbon monoxide detector. Uh, basically these stickers here is to make sure that you do properly test this. It is recommended it is tested every 9 to 14 days. And all you got to simply do is just push this button. It'll go off again. And just go back to green. Okay, these guys do have an expiration date of usually 7 to 10 years. Uh, with this model, you do actually have to pull it off and uh, remove it, and you'll see the tag on the back of it. Uh, I have seen them go out before that time span, okay? So just please be mindful of that. You always do want to make sure if that guy does go off um, that you are taking the necessary precautions uh, by trying to get everybody out of the coach. The first person out is going to be trying to turn off the propane canisters. The second person is trying to get everybody out and then trying to open some windows. Don't be trying to turn on fans or open it, you know, anything like that. We're not trying to create a spark. Then we're going to get 50 feet away for about 15 minutes. 15 minute time frame, someone comes back in, one person usually. I always recommend checking the stove first because it happens quite a bit. These knobs will get pushed and churned. All right, I'm going to backtrack for just two seconds. Uh, basically right down here is going to be where our fuse control panel box is located. So basically everything that runs off sure power, so you have to be plugged in for it to work, is going to be on your breakers. And they have everything labeled for you. And then everything that operates off the battery is going to be on the fuses. And once again, they got everything labeled for you as well. I would always like to recommend, um, just as a uh, safety precaution, that in the winter time, just so uh, it doesn't get forgotten that you don't turn this off, go ahead and pull the fuse for the fridge. So that way, if it isn't accidentally left on sitting in storage all winter, it doesn't completely kill and drain your batteries. Next, we're going to have our dinette area. Your light here is going to be in the center to turn it on and off. And then this here is going to be our manuals for most of the appliances in the coach. <clears throat> Forest River no longer sends paper manuals. You would have to go online, put in your camper information, and you'll download a PDF file for this coach. This is actually going to be stored for the time being. No, not in that one. We're going to stick that one in this one. It'll be in your second drawer. Uh, your cushion, or uh, your chairs actually have a little hidden storage space underneath. You always want to make sure that they're secured during travel. Uh, then we got our recliners. Basically, with the recliners, right inside our little place here is going to be handles on each side to where you can recline them. These guys have a little lights that light up. Of course, uh, I mean, you know, that's probably the best that's ever worked for me. <laughs> uh, you do have individual lights above each set. And then you also do got front storage here with a USB charging port. Uh, this is where your remote controls for our items are going to be located. When we come back around in the coach, we'll show you guys this here in just a little bit. Uh, but basically, your remotes are going to be stored inside this guy. All right, as we come back here towards the back, we're going to have the bedroom area. you got your switch here to turn it on and off. But you do actually have a secondary switch as well right near the entry door here to turn, to turn the bedroom lights on or off. Then you got storage under the bed, which you also have that compartment door on the outside that we showed you guys. Uh, try to talk a little above our air conditioner here. This one is a manual style, so basically you would have to turn the knobs. Uh, right now we are in high cool, and we have this guy basically turned all the way down, so it's just pumping out that cold air. And right now it doesn't matter how cold it's going to get, it's just going to continuously, continuously give us that cold air. You can adjust this guy right here where it would shut on and off. Okay, it also, as you see, it has a little redness on there. The reason why is because this actually has an aftermarket piece that can be installed for a heat strip, and then basically this front knob gets ch uh, changed out because right next to the off position is low fan, low fan. That first low fan would actually be low heat if that accessory item is put on this air conditioner. But basically what that does, it just pulls in that cooler air and warms it up for you. That only works to about 39 degrees. After that, it does struggle to warm that colder air up for you. All right, each side of your bed does have 110 outlets and USB hookups. And these guys are super fun to get to. So you're gonna, basically they're gonna be in the back corner there. 
my fat butt actually almost got stuck trying to squeeze in there to test them. <laughs> uh, and then basically we're going to have our closets over here. There is locks, so always make sure they are locked during travel. Pretty much it's going to be right here and then you're, it looks just like that one on that side. But over here on this side is going to be your washer and dryer hookup side. And it tells you your dryer vent location, which that's kind of crazy way over here. Uh, but there's also a closet that does have a, a hanging rod there for you as well. And then on this side here, you're going to have your other side of the closet. This here is a motion sensor light. The <coughs> one hash mark, the light will continuously stay on. The two hash mark is the motion sensor setting. So once it senses movement, it will automatically come on. Then we got our little dresser area here. Uh, basically our hookup for the TV for the bedroom and your TV backer is in this area here so you can mount the TV. Uh, I would usually try to recommend though, make sure you get a lightweight TV mount and one that snaps in place. Or if you get just get a TV that would slightly swivel, you will want to get a strap to make sure it's secured so it isn't bouncing as it goes down the road. All right, as we are gonna come around, we're gonna come around here to the bathroom area. So basically in here, you're gonna have your light switch for here. When you turn this on, it does also operate your fan, but you can also turn that fan off with that switch right there. Uh, you got your medicine cabinet, storage space. As you see, I got this panel taken off right here. This is actually where you are going to go to winterize your coach. So down here is going to be that third knob I was talking about when you go to winterize. Uh, he's going to be located right back here. Right there. So right now it's actually in line with the fresh water tank. So whenever you go to winterize, you're going to turn that knob to where it's going to be cooling from this hose here. And this would go into your antifreeze. And then you're using the water pump to winterize. All right, so then we're going to have our shower here. Basically, uh... With your shower, it's going to have a knob on the top there so you can reduce the flow of water. Your water heater is only 10 or 12 gallon water heater. The average American uses 38 gallons of hot water when they take a shower, so you're just outmatched. Actually, looking at yours, I actually, I think it might be a six. Uh, but during travel, you do want to make sure that this guy is going to be locked to make sure it doesn't move around and get damaged. Next, we're going to have our toilet here for the toilet. You're going to lightly press on this pedestal so you can add water to do your business. All the way down is going to flush. And then they're always going to put some water back in that bowl. The reason for that is so that seal doesn't get dry rot or brittle. But you can also take nonstick cook spray, spray the bowl of this toilet. Helps everything slide down and makes an easier clean for the cleaner. Alright, and then as we kind of travel in here, we're going to have our little entertainment center area. Uh, basically with the TV. You got your power button, turn that guy on. It'll take just a minute. I believe this is one of our smart TVs. Oh, well, that came on really fast. <laughs> All right. So, basically, when we get to a new area, you do got to scan for channels. And let's see, I got to try to remember how this one was. This one, nope, oh, nope, here we go. There's a setting icon up there. So, it'll come up here. And then we're just going to go down to where it says all settings give it just a minute you'll go down to channels and then channel tuning and there just follow the prompts to do what you got to do for scanning for channels now if you're on the, you know if you had the campground cable in this option you would choose between antenna or cable uh, if there is that campground cable right here on the back side is where our tv antenna booster is pop this guy here so we can pull that back so basically our booster is going to be located right here. So there's a little button here. I mean, I don't know if you can see that green light there, but if you push this button, it'll turn off. So what it's doing is it's cutting off the antenna feed so that cable signal can come through. But whenever you're using the radio or trying to use antenna TV, that has to be on. And then always make sure this guy is secure during travel. All right, so the next is going to be our radio. Uh, this guy here is going to be the remote for that. So you have two speaker zones. Speaker zone two is what it's in right now. Well, that's our outside speaker. One's going to be our inside speaker here. 
We can either have them both on or one or the other on. You're also able to hook up, hook this up to the TV as well. You'd have to kind of read the manual for a better understanding on that. Um, but basically, turn it on, turn it off. It'll tell you welcome and goodbye. And then our other remote here is going to be for the fireplace. You got your power to turn it on. Your temperature setting, so it'll, it'll be double zeros for just an ambiance look. And then there'll be a low and high. That's basically the fan speed. Then a timer setting from 30 minutes to nine hours. You can change the color of the rocks and the color of the flame. These guys here are going to be stored in our nice little center compartment here. Right there. All right, and then from there, we have basically made our way back to the door. Uh, hopefully the, this is uh, informational and knowledgeable for you guys. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to call us and we'll do our best to answer those for you over the phone. Thank you and have a wonderful day.